So what is going on guys, Nando Pinsani through here with another video and before we actually even get started, I just want to remind you guys that myself and the developer of Shift Screen are collabing on a giveaway for the Magic Trackpad 2. So all you guys have to do, I'm going to put the video link for this actual giveaway up here in the little uh, card section. So all you have to do is pause this video, give a comment on that video and then follow both of us on Twitter and then you're entered for the giveaway and we're announcing that winner uh, a week from when the last video was released. So definitely, you know, Take a stab at it, Magic Trackpad. We're gonna we're sending it out in Space Gray, so it's a $150 model. If you want the white one, you can also get that one. But uh, whatever you guys want, it's just a, a thank you and giving back to you guys for being such awesome, you know, viewers and subscribers. But that was my PSA for for this video. So let's get started on the actual video, guys. Let's go. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you know, most of you know that I use my iPhone as my primary recording device and then I use my iPad Pro as my editing device, right? And I've always gotten a bunch of questions as to what my workflow looks like, how do I edit on the iPad Pro, you know, is it hard, am I losing quality, is it enough to get a YouTube channel started? So I wanted to touch on all those things and also take you guys through my full editing workflow from, you know, beginning to end of when I have a video, have an idea, recording it on the iPhone, bringing it into the iPad, LumaFusion, and then all the different peripherals that I use to kind of help optimize uh, my workflow when it comes to editing videos and uploading them to YouTube for you guys. So without further ado, let's get started on that. So the first thing we gotta talk about is how this is all possible, right? The only way that this is possible is with the power of the iPad and the software that iPadOS brings. So when I first restarted the channel, I say restarted because I made a couple videos five, six years ago uh, that are still on the channel if you guys wanna check them out, which are pretty funny, but I restarted the channel probably about a year ago and I was using the OG iPad Pro from late 2015 and LumaFusion to edit those videos. So. So I was thinking to myself, like this thing is, this first generation product is powerful enough to get through 1080p footage uh, with no hiccups whatsoever. So then I took pretty much a one or two month pause on actually uploading anything and I got myself this iPad Pro, the 2018 model, 256 gig Wi-Fi only in silver and it's been crushing every single thing that I throw at it, guys. Um, again, I don't record in 4K just to kind of minimize file size and I know that pretty much most of my audience watches this content on their phone. So you won't really tell the difference, especially if you have an iPhone. So that's why I record in 1080p, 60 frames per second. The, the iPad Pro cuts through that with no problem whatsoever. There's no lag, it renders in real time. And I've seen people record in 4K and also edit with LumaFusion and it still renders and edits in real time, which is something that a lot of beefy Windows computers and even some, some MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs don't handle that well, which is again, Talks to the power of, because again, the hardware, yes, it's amazing. The hardware is amazing. It has everything it needs, but it's just the software optimization, guys. Everything works how it's supposed to and how you expect it to, which is why I've been able to get through all my editing on the iPad Pro. So that's the main thing it's all possible, right? And then we got to talk about the peripherals. So as you guys know, I use the iPhone 11 Pro Max to record my videos, like I said, in 1080p, 60 frames per second. And so I, I don't really require any dongles. I don't need to, the only, the way I transfer those files onto the iPad itself is I airdrop them. Guys, it's super easy, uh, it's quick, it uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to transfer it over and it transfers over uh, in full size in that 1080p format that I originally recorded it. And then some of the things I use to, again, optimize my experience with the iPad Pro is, you know, as you guys can see, I have a second monitor and I like to utilize that. So what I use um, as my hub and what I've been using lately is my Inatech 9-in-1 USB-C hub slash dock, right? So what I do is I, I have my HDMI cable, a USB-C power throughput connected to that, and then I have one USB-C to USB-C cable that goes from the Inatech hub to the iPad Pro itself. So it's charging the iPad Pro, it's um, mirroring the display onto the actual secondary monitor to give me something a little bit bigger to work with, right? And then now with iPadOS 13.4, mouse support, uh, it just makes it that much better. So I have my Magic Trackpad 2, I also have the the keyboard case that I have, and if I want to prop stand, I also have the Magic Keyboard from Apple, the one without the number pad, and I use that from time to time. I use the trackpad a lot more than I use a regular Apple keyboard, because sometimes I just keep it how it is with the actual keyboard case itself. And then again, the editing app that I use is LumaFusion. I don't really think there's anything better out there when it comes to video editing on the iPad Pro itself. If Final Cut Pro does end up releasing for the iPad Pro, I don't know if I would go to it. I know that they're very similar. It's probably gonna be a lot more money. Right now, LumaFusion is on, on sale for $29.99 in the App Store. I think when I got it nine months ago, it was $19.99. So 
for 30 bucks, you really can't go wrong if you're gonna do more than just cut and paste, you know, or cut clips, put them together. Because if you wanna start playing around, in my opinion, start with iMovie, learn iMovie, perfect iMovie, and then move on to LumaFusion. Um, and then one other thing that I use is when I'm done with a project, when I'm done editing a project, let's say I put a bunch of clips together, uh, everything's looking good, I then export it. And one thing that you should keep in mind, especially if you're a LumaFusion user, and I don't know if this is just because I'm recording from an iPhone and something happens, but when you export it, what I used to do was I would export the, the final video and I would export it into my like photos application, like the native Apple photos application. Um, and even though I was exporting in 1080p, whenever I would upload it from the photos application into YouTube, it would default and, and leave the max resolution at 720p. One way that I figured out how to fix this is instead of exporting the file to the photos application, I now export it directly into my RadPower SSD that I have and it goes through the file system. And then when I upload it to YouTube from the file system or from the files app in the iPad Pro, then it does uh, upload in 1080p. So I was able to fix that issue and I, was, I still don't know why Apple does that or why the Photos app makes it or why uploading from the Photos app itself lowers the quality of the actual video, but it is what it is and I figured out how to fix it and it doesn't create any extra steps for me or anything like that. And that's what I do. All my final projects are saved onto my RavPower SSD. It's got about 500 gigs of storage, transfers relatively quickly. I do wish that the iPad Pro had Thunderbolt 3 support and not just USB-C to increase those transfer speeds. Because if you are transferring huge files, like if you're working with a 4K video that's 10, 15 minutes long, ends up being 20 gigs, it's gonna take a little while, guys. It will take a little while. Uh, good thing for me, again, I'm in 1080p, so my max file size of a final video is about two gigabytes and that's the absolute max. I have not seen it go above two gigabytes. And one of the last peripherals that I use, and this is a sleeper pick, and I think some of you guys have noticed it from watching my videos, is you guys see me look at my watch every now and then. Um, and the reason I do that is because uh, I didn't even know this. I just opened up the, the, the camera app on the, on the Apple Watch probably a few months ago when I first got this Apple Watch, and it ends up being a viewfinder. So if you guys can kind of see there, it ends up being a little viewfinder that allows me to kind of frame my picture and make sure that I'm in frame, make sure that everything's looking okay. Because before what I would do, when I would do these A-rolls, in order to see my, see what I was recording, I would use a selfie camera and it did degrade the quality, especially when it, when the, light, the lighting was a little bit lower. It would get extremely noisy and it just wouldn't look that good. So now I'm using the triple camera array, I'm using the main camera, and I'm able to use the, the Apple Watch as a viewfinder for what I'm doing which I think is an awesome little hack if you guys want to try that out. Okay, so that is my entire setup and how I go, I go from uh, you know, recording a video to getting it on the iPad to then begin editing. And then I'm gonna walk you guys through my editing process, but it's gonna be very brief because I don't want to bore you guys with me actually editing a video. So the first thing I do is obviously I record my A-roll, which is this, it's me talking, it's me in the frame, and you know, stuff in the background and things like that. And then what I, once I have all the A-roll edited, or once I have all the A-roll recorded, I'll then transfer the A-roll to my iPad. And what I'll do is I'll edit just the A-roll at first, right? Make sure everything, I get rid of all the ums, all the, all the redundancies, make sure I have my final product and make sure it looks and sounds good. Um, and then what I do is then what, as I'm editing, I put little marks that say, or I put little marks in my notes. I'll be like, hey, at this time, I wanna add this kind of B-roll, right? So then I'll go back once the A-roll is edited and then uh, once I get to the point where I want that B-roll to be added, I pause uh, LumaFusion grab my iPhone, record my B-roll, import it with, uh, then airdrop that into the iPad Pro itself and then add that B-roll. So it's kind of like a, a live action just to see, you know, where the B-roll would fit as opposed to just filming a bunch of B-roll then trying to figure out which one I actually want to use and then putting it down. I think it's a little more efficient because instead of going through doing 18 different shots of the same B-roll to see which one looks the best, where the light hits the best and things like that, I, and then having to sift through it and reorganize all that and find the one that I want to use, even though they're all very, very similar. I now have, I know exactly where I want to put the B-roll. I've recorded the B-roll in real time, basically from where I want it. So I just have the one time or maybe twice that I record that same B-roll clip. And then I just airdrop one file to make it easy for me to not have to sift through a bunch of different, you know, takes of B-roll of the same exact. So once the B-roll is added, then I just add my music, guys. I put my music underneath. I usually keep the volume at like negative, whatever, I think it's 25 decibels. And then I, you know, manipulate the volume depending if I want it to be louder at some sections and lowered when I'm speaking. So I make sure that the music doesn't take over my voice. After, after the music has been added and the volume of the music is where I want it to be, I had that final little credit scene where the last 15 seconds to kind of guide you guys to other videos and the subscribe button. And that's pretty much it guys. Once that's done, I export it, like I said, to my RAV Power SSD. 
And from there, I upload it to YouTube, add all my comments, add a description, add my tags, and that pretty much is the beginning to end of a workflow creation with the iPad Pro using LumaFusion, guys. And again, like I said, it's very possible. I, I mean, yes, I have the latest iPhone 11, which was about $1,000 or whatever the case may be. Got the iPad Pro on Amazon Prime Day last year, and that was, I think, $900. So the setup is still about $2,000, but at the end of the day, it's stuff that you already have most of the time, and something that you can use. And even before, so when I la early last year, I was using my iPhone 10, which was about a two-year-old device when I first started using it, and that camera worked fine. So use what you guys have around you. Don't try to overcomplicate anything. And that's pretty much it, guys. So if you guys wanna get it going, get started, use whatever camera you have laying around the house, even if that is your phone camera, use any iPad. Because like I said, I still think that the 10.2 iPad, the one that's $329, could handle what I'm doing right now. iPad Pro just gives me that future proof. So like, let's say if I do wanna move to 4K, it can still handle it. And it also gives me more storage, internal storage for the price. The $329 iPad only gives you about 32 gigs, right? And then that's pretty much gonna do it guys. So that's my beginning to end, how to edit, how to record using just an iPhone, using just an iPad, using the app LumaFusion. And I've been loving it and I've been able to grow this channel you know, from about 200 subscribers to where it is now, thanks to you guys. And thanks to pretty much what Apple's been doing. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. I know we're ending kind of on a weird one with, a, with like a vlog style kind of situation, but uh, if you guys do wanna enter the giveaway for the Magic Trackpad 2, like I said, go to the video from before, follow both myself and Shift Screen on Twitter. And that's pretty much it, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you made it to the end, leave a comment below. And until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.